All right, everyone, there are only two links in the description of this video, and those are to my blog spot and to my WordPress with regards to my literary works, because at long last and well ahead of schedule, in fact, it's just barely October, I didn't expect to finish till the middle of December, um, edition 300, the 300th occult edited work that I've crafted is now complete. I will be, of course, making a video on that as well. But that means that the second stage of my lifelong literary project, my sort of lifelong occult ritual is now done. The first stage was the first hundred editions, focusing on some of the heavy hitters, certain grimoires and stuff. Now, but then I realized there was such a core of literature, I just said, well, I'm gonna get to 300. The next stage is much more simple. I'm going to keep editing occult works probably for the rest of my life in one form or another. Um, that could take me up to uh, a thousand editions or something by the time I'm lying dead and cold in the grave uh, suffering. But uh, there are other things that I wanted to do, like because I've spent so much time editing, I haven't had as much time to author anything. Um, there are also compilational works that I've been planning for several years that I couldn't get around to. I just didn't have the time uh, or the stamina to do it because I was plowing through these works so quickly. And the next step, I want to create a couple of literally academic works, intermediate length and form. Uh, that study topics like one topic that I've become almost obsessed with is the the fortune telling tradition that goes all the way back to the 1700s with like the Book of Knowledge, the Norwood Norwood Gypsy, uh, through the 1800s were the very popular even into the early 20th century before kind of j dropping off a cliff. Certainly recently, the internet displacing this particular tradition, fortune tellers, and looking at sort of the pedigree and the evolution and change in time of the different components of what comprises one of these works. Sometimes there are folkloric charms in them. Sometimes there are oracles, and there's five or six different systems. Palmistry falls in and out of favor. Dream interpretation is more or less expansive. There are all these things in these books borrow from one another as well. Um, so I, I would really like to look at that as an actual study. Uh, I began doing that, but then I realized that there were about twice as many fortune tellers to actually analyze, and I started realizing that if I decided to make a work on this, it would probably be fairly long. I could probably write a 200-page work just on this topic. Um, from an academic standpoint, using examples from the texts, from the ones I've edited, as well as some that I haven't edited yet. Some of them are more difficult to edit, they're full of pictures that have to be reworked. Um, I've had, I've had my, my artist uh, do that at times, I've done some myself, simply digitizing. Uh, but keep in mind, the first reason why I started doing this uh, literary project is because I really just, I, I noticed that there were so many occult works that were technically, they're in the public domain, but there was no proper modern release of them. You could get a copy that was expensive, or you could get a copy that was cheaper, but although still expensive for what you're getting, there would just be a scan of the original document. That's fine for primary sourcing to know that it's legitimate, but that means that it carries all of the imperfections of the initial document. What if a person with the skills to do so goes back through the document and creates a new modern edition? That's what I wanted to do, and I wanted to hold the price down as well so that it would be affordable to a new audience, because like, you know, being from the lower class at the time, I'm looking at these editions and I'm saying, well, this shitty PDF scan from archive, uh, the internet archive that someone slapped into a new format kind of and gave a cover is still 20 bucks. Well, shit, I mean, if you want to fill a single bookshelf, you're paying through the nose. Why don't I hold the price down as low as I can? I was able, in most cases, to reduce it by half or more. And so it opens up an entire new niche audience of people that want a proper edition. Uh, they're not looking for a primary source document in its initial form. I would say grifting form in some cases, talentless form with a shitty cover, uh, but don't want to pay huge amounts of money for it. And so I've, I've managed to carve out a niche audience there that... that you know, uh, it brings home the gravy, so to speak. But anyway, there are other things I want to do. Um, over the next year or so, uh, certainly through 2021, 22, uh, I want to get into some of my own uh, writing as well. I want to write some more political documents. Uh, I wanted to write Sickness and Hell too, uh, make another Morbid Stories compilation. And then I wanted to create collections of different types of occult work. Like what I want to do, I want to create an alchemical compendium three, four hundred pages of alchemy, um, fully annotated and so forth, full bibliography, expanded forward and preface and so forth, maybe illustrated, something that takes pieces of other alchemical documents and puts them on display 
and sort of creates a, a quasi-academic full-length work on the subject. I definitely want to make my own grimoire uh, by piecing together material from others as well as from folkloric documents. Um, there's a huge, huge amount of material there. It would not be difficult to create a bric-a-brac Petit Albert, Albertus Magnus, Egyptian secret style grimoire. In fact, there are people that literally are doing it to this day. Considering the bulk of work that I can draw from, which are my own copyrighted editions and I don't have to justify to anybody under the sun, including Amazon, I can take that material freely from my own editions and hash it together and create a three, four hundred page work, and it would be relatively simple. I would, of course, uh, start each section with a new preface, there would be a, a much more expansive forward, there'd be a reading list and so forth, and so it would take that basic form. I'd like to do one on herbalism. Uh, I'd like to do one on cryptids. <laughs> of course, I don't have quite as much material, unfortunately. A lot of the cryptid documents, until relatively recently, it's not like you're going to get in the Fortean times or something. It's, it's fairly academic and rationalistic. It isn't until the, last, until the atomic era, basically, that you really get some of that interest in cryptids in the more true sense. A lot, of, a lot of the cryptozoology stuff that you know of, it's, it's not ancient legends, it's a modern speculation. So that's the second wave uh, of my occult project now done. And the third wave begins, which is I'm free to do whatever I want forever, but I want to take time out to do some of those substantial works, including some that I want to actually be the author of, not just an editor. That's about all. Peace out.